Have you ever wondered what the CAGE system is and whether or not it's something that's important for you to learn? We're going to look at what it is, how I teach it in my conservatory classes, and how I use it with my private students. Uh, we're going to learn a system of organization that's going to allow you to internalize your music theory and then forget about it as you play on the fretboard. I'm Mark Ween from Jack's Guitar Tracks. This video lesson is actually going to be much longer than our standard lesson. It's going to be divided up almost into chapters or sections, and there's going to be links below. If you want to skip to any particular section or you want to go back and review, take a look at the video description box below. There's going to be links to each of the sections. There's also going to be a link for your printable PDF, which has all the worksheets for this. You're going to see later on why we need that. And then also there are links to other materials, uh, backing tracks and whatnot. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever used the CAGE system, what you thought of the CAGE system before and after this video, and also if you have any specific questions about this, and we'll try and answer it in a future video. So first thing is let's talk about what CAGE system really is or what it means. The letters C, A, G, E, and D actually refer to your open chords, uh, the chords that almost all of us learn in the very beginning, as they're played in a very specific order. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But what it does is it gives us five boxes or zones on the fretboard that allow us to easily digest stuff that we're learning. We're actually going to learn sections of the fretboard in smaller chunks, and then we're going to put it all together later on. And that's what the cage system is good for, is basically making this more manageable so that later on you know everything everywhere. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at your first chord here, which is going to be your open C chord. <laughs> Every one of these chords, the major chords, are made up of three notes. And we're not going to get into the theory of this too much, but you have a root, which is your starting note. That's the name of the chord, which is going to be C. You're going to have a third and a fifth. And the numbers refer to the distance those notes are from your root. And if we're when we build major scales later on, it's going to be a little bit more obvious as to what this is. For right now, all we have to really worry about is the fact that we need the notes that are the roots out of this. And in the case of the C chord, it's where your first finger is and where your third finger is. All right, so if we play those two notes together, and just uh, as a point of reference, I'm doing a lot of hybrid picking here with this hand. Or I'll play the pick and then a finger uh, just to get the notes together. I'm not strumming anything. We only want to hear those notes that are the root. So your first shape here, the C chord, you've got your first finger on the first fret, second string, third finger on the third fret on the fifth string play those together, those are both C notes. If we actually move them up a fret, they're going to be C sharp. Move it up again, it's going to be D. This is the natural order of notes on the fretboard. If you're not familiar with this or to find how to find your notes on the fretboard, uh, we actually have a video. We're going to put a little description up here in the top uh, or a link that will actually get you to that video and it'll help you learn where your notes are on the fretboard. You may want to go do that and then come back to this lesson if you're stuck. So that's going to be your C shape and where we move it is going to give us those notes on those strings. So if we move it up here, this is an E. That's also going to be an E in octave higher. And you can test that by playing the open strings. First string open, sixth string open. They all sound the same. The next chord, the A chord, this is how I play it on the instrument. You're going to have the fingering up there. The roots are going to be the notes, the open fifth string, and then the note on the uh, second fret on the third string. What we're going to do to make it a movable chord or a movable root pattern is we're going to take your first finger, put it on the first fret on the uh, fifth string, and either your third or your fourth finger, whichever is easier for you, on the third string uh, on the third fret. We can just move that up. If we move it up to where the C is, so we've got A, A sharp, B, C, right, we actually have the same two notes from this root pattern. One of them is the actual same physical note on the fretboard, the other one is, is going to be this C, but in this part of the fretboard. So you're going to start seeing where the stuff kind of duplicates all over the place. So that's your C shape. That's your A shape. It's going to get a little trickier now because you're going to have your uh, G pattern. The G pattern, you're going to have a root on the first string, third fret, sixth string, third fret, because those are the same strings. And then the open third string is your G. So in order to make this a movable shape, we put your first finger on the first fret on the third string, that gets the open string. We put your pinky, or your little finger, on the fourth fret on the uh, first string, and then your third finger up here. 
Most people can get this, although it takes a little bit of a stretch down here. I kind of like this. It's almost like I'm sneaking finger yoga in to get people used to positioning their hands. You see where my thumb is? That also helps. If your thumb's all the way over here, it's really hard to make anything work. But if you get used to your thumb being centered behind your hand, most of this is actually doable by people with all hand sizes and shapes. It just may take a little bit of, of uh, practice and stretching. So this is G sharp. We're going to move these all up into the C uh, root pattern so we see how these connect. So that's G sharp, A, A sharp, B. Here is the C. So we have the C shape in C. We have the A shape in C. And now we have the G shape in C. All right. Just a reminder, so we've taken each of these open chords, we've discovered which notes are the roots out of them, and now we're moving them up the fretboard basically to make one big pattern that's going to give us all the C notes. Later on, we can do this on anything. I know that if I was to start here on, on the uh, G pattern with the A notes, I can continue going up the fretboard using those. You're going to see how that connects in a few minutes. After G in the cage uh, system, we have E. We have the open first string and sixth string as roots, and then the note on the uh, second fret on the fourth string. In order to make this a movable shape, this is another one of these finger yoga things. First finger on the first fret sixth string, second finger on the first fret first string, and then I use my pinky out here. Right. That's also going to kind of stretch this. Uh, remember, your thumb helps if it's in the center. So if we move this, this is F, F sharp G, G sharp A, A sharp B, this is C. One thing you're going to start seeing is wherever your third or fourth finger is in these, in one pattern, that's where your first finger is going to go for the next. All right. And then there's your third finger here, first finger, and that gives us our E pattern, our E shape. Last one is D. This is almost the easiest one. We've got the open fourth string, which is D. All right. And then this is the uh, third fret on the second string. In order to make that a movable shape, we're going to take your first finger on the first fret on the fourth string, and we're going to put our fourth finger on the fourth fret on the second string. That gives us D sharp. And we want to move this all the way up. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. And now I'm on C. So if I was to move through all of these and try and keep them in the on the C, these are C notes. These are C notes. These are C notes. These are C notes. These are C notes, and then we've gotten to the D, we start over again. So where my fourth finger is, I put my first finger, I've got the C shape, I've got the A shape, and kind of cram my hand into the, and my intonation is not so good up here right now, <laughs> uh, that's the G shape, and then I could actually even try and play the, the E shape up there. What this does is it gives us this bigger pattern, this connection of all five of these zones or parts on the fretboard, where we can find anything we want. We're going to build scales. Out of the scales, we're going to pull triads and chords. Um, but most importantly, we're going to be able to find any note anywhere on the fretboard. So just as a recap, our cage system is pulled from our open chords, C chord, A chord, G, E, and D. And out of those chords, out of the three notes that make up a major chord, the root, third, and fifth, we're just going to pull the root note, which is the starting point for each of these. And this is going to be the framework that we're going to build our, uh, our theory on top of later on. We're going to do this on paper. What becomes real important, though, is the idea that you have to know your notes on the fretboard so that you can move things around. So I know that this is C. Here's an F right here. I know that's F. And if I know that's F, I can go through the C pattern, A pattern, G pattern, E pattern. I can do the E pattern down here like we did originally. D, come back to C. I can find F anywhere on the fretboard now. But you have to memorize those patterns and you have to practice them in order. Okay, this is the worksheet that comes with the packet for this. You can see it's got five necks on it. Uh, each one of these necks has a root pattern on it, all in the cage order. Uh, this is going to be your C shape here. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we actually get a major scale built around each of these. Now, the process for doing this 
Um, you're probably asking, why are we doing this on paper when I need to be able to play it on guitar? But it's really important, I've discovered, for us to learn this information in a way that doesn't rely on you also remembering how to play your instrument. So what we do is we do it on paper and that helps build a really solid memory of how this stuff is supposed to go. It's a lot easier to remember the patterns once you get them in your head this way. So this is actually the process I do when I teach private students. It's also what I use when I teach in the conservatory. Uh, and it's been really effective. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna build major scales, which we just talked about. There are whole steps between every set of notes except for three and four and seven and eight. Usually I'll have my students kind of put a reminder there or seven and root. Okay, so if we're here and we're on the root and we need to go up a whole step, we're trying to keep this kind of around that root pattern. So if we go up a whole step on the same string, that isn't really convenient. What we want to do is we want to actually get to the next note here. So we're going to put a two right here. All right. And that two is a whole step up. And then the third note of the scale is going to be here. Now we're using the numbers instead of actually learning the note names because we're learning all this stuff relative to your root. And that's going to be an important part of you actually internalizing these sounds later on. Uh, we're learning distances. Uh, there's a couple different ways of learning this stuff. This way actually ends up being pretty effective uh, when I use it with my students or if, you know, if I'm working on something myself. So if we're on three, the next note up is a half step, which would be one fret, which would be the four right there. And then we need a whole step. We're going to go to five. If you notice, we're trying to keep this in kind of a four fret stretch as much as possible. And it's not always going to be done that way, but we try and make it so that it actually fits in your hand more conveniently. So five to six, whole step. Now a whole step to seven could be there, but one thing that actually works best is if we keep the half steps on the same string. So we're gonna put a seven there. And the reality is we know that below the root, that's the octave, you're always gonna have the seven and a half step below. So just fill that in. All right, and I'm gonna go through each of my pages here, or each of my necks. I'm just gonna put my sevens in there. Why not? And, and what it does for me is it actually kind of helps keep me on track as I do this stuff. So seven, 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 and then the last one here, seven and seven. And as we come through this, you'll see how that actually makes life a little bit easier. So we're back on our C shape here. We've got the root and then we're going two again. As we go up to the next octave, we're going to go a whole step to three, half step to four, whole step to five. And that kind of gives us all we're going to get out of that octave. But what we want to do is we want to learn the complete area. So what we're going to do is we're going to go root, seven, we're going to go backwards, whole step down to six, whole step down to five, and you'll notice that this mirrors the first string, whole step down to four, half step down to three. Let's do the next one. Okay, so this is actually um, the A pattern. So we're going to go root, two, it's up a whole step, whole step to three. Makes sense to kind of keep it, if this is kind of the four fret area, then it makes sense to go there instead of all the way up there. Plus, we want three notes per string right now, half steps on the same string, half step to four, whole step to five, whole step up to six. Right, we've got our whole step to seven already in there and our half step to there. Now, when we're going from three to four, or I'm sorry, the third string to the second string, when we're going from the third string to the second string, we have the shorter whole step distance. So this is gonna be two here instead of out there because that's the major third, and then three, and then half step to four, and then whole step up to five, whole step to six. And that's gonna be as far as we need to go with this one. And then if we go backwards, get the rest of this, root, seven, six, and five. Now one thing you can do to kind of error check is if I do this, you kind of see that they're the same, right? You're going to start seeing the overlap between these scales, which is one of the things that we're shooting for. Okay, so the next one, this is the G shape. So we got root, whole step up to two, whole step to three, half step to four, whole step to five, whole step to six, half step to seven, I'm sorry, whole step to seven, half step to root, whole step to two. Now here's our third to second string. So uh, from two to three is gonna be here. All right, that's a shorter distance, four, 
whole step to five, and then we want our um, whole step from five to six right there. And then to go backwards, root half step to seven, whole step to six. Let's take a peek at our overlap. Look, all looks the same. That's good. All right, remember these are all in the same key. Now we're gonna do the E shape. So root, whole step to two, whole step to three, half step to four. You see I start going a little faster. Uh, whole step to five, whole step to six, whole step to seven, half step from seven to root, which is already in there. And then we've got whole step to two, whole step to three, half step to four. And then we've got our, our deal right here. So um, four to five is gonna be right there, five to six. Then whole step to seven would be here. And then you got the seven to the root already in, and then two. Let's do a little overlap check. All right, that looks pretty good, right? Except for my sloppy writing. Now the last one, this is the D shape, root to two, whole step to three, half step to four, whole step to five, whole step to six right here, right? Because that's the uh, three and two, that's the short distance. Whole step to seven, half step to root, whole step to two, whole step to three, and then there's four. And if we go backwards, root seven, whole step backwards to six, whole step backwards to five, um, whole step backwards to four, just like we do on the first string, there is three, half step, and then whole step to two, it matches the top string. Okay, and then we take a look at our overlap, and that looks pretty solid too. So there's there are ways that you can build in the error checking on this. All right, so that's the first thing, that's your major scales. In the, in the cage system. And if you go through this, a good way to memorize this or to get better at it is maybe print out five or six of these and maybe once a day just build a worksheet. You'd be surprised at how fastly you memorize it and how easy it is to remember this on your instrument. Now the last step for this lesson is we're going to go through and we're going to highlight all of the roots, thirds, and fifths. All right, makes a mess because I'm using pencil here. But what this does is this actually gives us, let's see, five root three, five root. This actually gives us our major triad out of each of these uh, scale patterns. It's root three, five root three, five root. And suddenly you have not only a major scale, but you also have your major triad arpeggio in each one of these positions. I'll start here with three, five root, three, five root, three. So now we're gonna learn how to internalize these scales, how to get them under your fingers and into your ears in a way that's actually gonna make sense for you as a player, where you can actually utilize them and it's not just a memorized pattern. We're going to do these all in the key of C sharp, mainly because that's what your worksheet is in. And every time we do one of these scale patterns, we're going to start on the lowest root in the pattern. So we're starting in the C shape, and we're going to start on our fourth finger. And as we play each of these, we're going to call its name or scale degree out loud. We want to verbalize it. And part of that is because it helps you actually memorize what each of these notes are as you're playing. It also keeps you on track a little bit better, because you know you have half steps between the third and fourth notes and the seventh and eighth notes. So if we start on the root here, C sharp, fourth fret, on the fifth string, we're going to go root. And the other thing also is we're going to go up as far as we can go. We're going to come all the way down. We're going to get any notes below the root, and then we're going to return to the root. We always want to start and end on the root, because that's part of how you actually learn the sound of the scale as a major scale. Because you can modalize or turn the scale into six other scales. Uh, every note you start on can actually be a root, depending on what sound you're trying to get out of it. And we're just trying to get used to this actually being a useful major sound. So that's why we're starting always on the lowest root instead of starting on the lowest note in the physical pattern. We're going to start on, on the root, and we're going to call these out as we play. Root, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Root, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, root, seven, six, five, four, three, two, root, seven, six, five, four, three, four, 
five, six, seven, root. <clears throat> you notice, I mean, you heard it. It resolved right there. We really want to get used to this sounding like a major scale. We'll learn modes and, and minor scales and things like that later on, and we'll practice those accordingly. So that's the C pattern. That's the first one. The second one here that's mm -hmm. on the A pattern, we're going to start on the second finger. And you're going to notice most of these patterns either start on your fourth finger or your second finger, right? And that's us trying to keep like a four fret uh, distance or, or box right here. It makes it a little bit easier to play these things. And I'll show you some fingering uh, techniques that will probably help this actually go a little bit better. So we're going to start here, the same C sharp. We go root, two, three, four, five, six, seven, root. I'm bringing the first finger up a fret to go two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two. Notice I'm going to bring the pinky back here to the root so I can move, shift the hand out of position. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, root. Seven, six, five, six, seven, root. I'll just play up and down the scale one time. See how I shifted positions there without actually sliding one finger on the same string? Next pattern is based off of your G root pattern. I'm starting on the C sharp on the ninth fret on the sixth string. All right, and this actually has kind of a weird thing where we're going to go through and we're going to have to shift positions probably twice. Root, two, three, four, five, six. Now notice I'm using my pinky on six because I can reach back for the seven with my first finger without picking the whole hand up and moving it. We have root, two, and then position shift back up again. Three, four, five, six, seven, root. Seven, six, five, four, three. I'm bringing my pinky back a fret, so I can grab the two, and then just kind of shift the whole hand down. Root, seven, six. I'm going to bring my first finger up for five, four, three, two, root, seven, six, seven, root. I'll play through it one more time. through these scales but it's a great way to get started to build your bass technique now we're going to be in the E root shape we're going to start here on the same C sharp on the second finger this time root two three four five six seven root two three four notice I'm using my second finger on five six now I can get seven with the first finger root two root seven Six five four three two root seven six five four three two root uh, seven and then root. The idea with this one is to not have to move because you can go up like that, but then you got to come back down. It's a lot of wasted effort. The last one, the D shape, start on the second finger on the fourth uh, fourth string. Root two. Position shift up. Six, seven, root, two, three, four, three, two, root, seven, six, five, four, three, two, root, seven. Here's that position shift again. Six, then bring the first finger up for five, and then bring the pinky up for four. Three, two, three, four, five. Bring the pinky back for six. 7 and then root. I'll play through that without talking for a second. Now for each of these scales, you also have the arpeggios, root, three, five, root, three, five, three, root, five, 
five three root five three five root you can play those in any one of those places you play the scale all right there's going to be a lesson linked to this about ear training for beginning improvisers where we talk about uh how you can immediately start getting used to building phrases that make sense to your ears by utilizing the difference between the scale, the chord tones here, the one, three, and five, and all the other notes in the scale. So that would probably be a good place to move on to from here. But what we've been able to do in this lesson is we've taught you that your root patterns come from the open chords that you learned when you probably first learned how to play guitar. They're movable chord shapes. You know how to move them up and down the fretboard and find any note anywhere on the guitar. We learned how to build a major scale within each of those five shapes. We learned how to pull a major triad out of each of them by pulling the root third and fifth. And then we learned a way of practicing these that will help you as we go on into other lessons understand what you're doing. And believe it or not, all of this stuff where we're calling out the scale degrees that's really going to help because you're going to start seeing how an idea can make sense here. Right, I know root three, five, six, five, root three, five, six, five, root three, five, six, five, root uh, three, five, six, five, right? Because I know what those notes are all relative to your, your root or your tonic, I can take that idea and move it anywhere on the fretboard now because I know where those notes are replicate themselves relative to all of the roots and the root patterns. So you'll see a lot of lessons in the uh, upcoming weeks and months where we're going to talk and we're going to reference this stuff. So it's a really good place to start. And you're going to find you're going to learn your fretboard in its entirety uh, really, really well. It's just it's going to take some repetition and, and some work.